Hello everyone, in this uh, lecture we're going to be talking about the phase diagrams of water and carbon dioxide. So just pick those two molecules because those are the most common ones you're going to be seeing and you will see a very critical difference uh, between one another. The phase diagrams actually talks about how the transition takes place between the solids to liquids or talks about how liquids and um, your vapor is going to be in equilibrium or the gas state is going to be in, at equilibrium under what conditions of pressures and temperatures. So this first one is going to be for the water, so that one is the water, and the second one is for the CO2. And we'll talk about the water first and then we'll move on to the carbon dioxide. There are some differences between the, um, the phase diagrams of water and carbon dioxide. We have temperature on the x-axis, so that's going to be measured in a degree Celsius, and you got pressure on the y-axis, that's going to be measured in atmosphere. On this left side, so you got three segments in, in this particular curve, so I can just call this 1, 2, and 3. So your segment 3 is going to be the gas phase. The segment 2, all that area is going to be corresponding to the liquid phase, and then your 1 is going to be the solid phase. And if I call these points right there, so let's start here, A, B, C, and D. So you want to be careful with the, all these curves or lines we got in there. So this line B, C, it's the transition or uh, transition being taken place between the solid and liquid, so that's also called fusion curve. Curve B and D is the transition between the liquid and the gas, and that particular curve is going to be called the vaporization curve. And then obviously this uh, AB curve, which is brown in color in this particular case, is the transition between the solid and the gas, and that one is called uh, sublimation curve. And you're going to be seeing those three curves in carbon dioxide as well, but just slight differences uh, between the temperature conditions, pressure conditions, and maybe how much of the solid and liquid you can have existed for the carbon dioxide and water would be different as well. So wherever these three curves meet, which is at point B right there, that point is going to be called a triple point. All right, so triple point is the condition where condition of temperature and pressure where you have all three matters phase is going to be in equilibrium, and that's going to be true for water as well. You're going to have ice, liquid, and the vapor all existing together or in equilibrium with one another at that particular condition. The triple point for the water, so I'm going to write that down here, the temperature needs to be about 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, so that's not going to be that bad to get that temperature. However, the pressure that need that's needed to get that particular triple point for water is 0 0.006 atmosphere, so something that you can't really get in a daily life, so that's why you don't really see water existing as in three phases at the, at the same time. However, you can get those settings in, in the lab. In addition to that, you're also going to have this point D. This point D is also important in the sense that it's called an critical point. So what's an critical point is when the temperature and the pressure after that critical point, your liquid and gas phases are not going to be distinguishable from one another. Or another way of saying, I don't really have a well-defined line at this point here, so if I maybe change the color there. So you don't really have a well-defined line at this point. That's because after that, you can't really tell the difference between the liquid and the gas. Or another way of saying, the matter will exist in a slightly different phase, which is called in a supercritical fluid. So that's how it's going to be existing after the critical point. And whatever the temperature conditions you're going to have, at the critical point, it's called a critical temperature. So we got a critical temperature and we have a critical pressure as well. So those are your temperature and pressure conditions to get to the critical point. And obviously, the critical point is going to be different for different substances. Let's focus on this phase diagram for carbon dioxide. And I can probably number or 
letter those very similar way like I have done for water here. So this uh, A, B, C, and D. So your B, C is, uh, well, I, I still got three regions there, one, two, three. The first region is still going to be the solid. The third region is going to be the gas. And then your second region is going to be the liquid. Very similar to what you've seen in case of water. However, here is a big difference. Your fusion curve is not that big in this particular case. So BC was fairly big uh, in case of water, but you don't really have such a big fusion curve. And then your AB, which is a sublimation curve, is fairly big. And that's because when it comes to carbon, di carbon dioxide existing in the liquid form, it's rare. You don't really see carbon dioxide existing in the liquid form. Either you could have in a solid form, which is also called the dry ice. So this is where the dry ice going to be. But then anytime you heat up the dry ice, it does not get converted into the liquid carbon dioxide, but rather it gets converted into the gas form. So that's why there isn't a big sublimation curve going from A to B. And then you still have other curves like BD, which is going to be the vaporization curve, and the BC, that's going to be your fusion curve. But for the most part, your dry ice under normal conditions or under a real life conditions will be converting into the gas phase. So you still have this triple point here, and there isn't a big difference in the triple point of the carbon dioxide. So if I go and write down the triple point for triple point conditions for the carbon dioxide, temperature is about negative. 56.7 degrees Celsius, and as far as the pressure go, it's going to be 5.1 atmosphere. Uh, you c obviously you can't really get those conditions in daily life. You can't really get in a negative 56, 56.7 degrees Celsius temperature. Maybe some part of the world you could get it, but still you cannot get that pressure. 5.1 atmosphere. That's like five times the normal atmospheric pressure we have in the air. So that's not possible. So that's why you don't really see carbon dioxide getting converted into the liquid, but rather it gets converted into the gas phase. And in addition to that, there is one big difference in the fusion curve. The fusion curve for the water has a negative slope, but the fusion curve for carbon dioxide has a positive slope. So when would you have a positive curve and a negative curve? That more or less depended on the density of your solids with respect to the liquids. Now, the density of the solid ice is actually less than the density of the liquid. That's why your ice floats on the water. And that's the reason why you have this negative slope. And what else that tells you is no matter, once you get to this um, freezing temperature, which is like a 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, no matter how you increase the temperature, uh, how, no matter how you increase the pressure, you're not going to get into the solid form. So if I draw a line here, that's kind of going up there. So that's where the reference 0 0.01 temperature we're kind of looking at. So at 0.01, if, if you start increasing the pressure, you're still going to be in the liquid phase. You're not going to get the solid phase. However, that's not necessarily true for carbon dioxide. Once you get to that triple point condition, you can increase the temperature, increase the pressure, and you can compress your gas into the solid form once you increase the pressure. But you cannot really do that for the water. And when would that happen? Anytime the solid is less dense than the liquid part of it. Obviously, your dry ice is more dense than uh, liquid carbon dioxide and the gas part, but when it comes to just the ice comparing to liquid water, ice is less dense than the liquid water. So that's why it behaves like this. And uh, if, you, if you focus on the gap that's being created when the ice is made, it's bigger than the water molecules when they are in the liquid form. So the water molecules are closer to one another when they are in the liquid form as opposed to when they are in the solid form. But that's what you really have to know about uh, the phase diagrams for the water and the carbon dioxide. Make sure you, are, you know what a triple point and a critical points are. 
that's usually the ask question. You don't necessarily have to know what those triple point and critical point conditions are um, exactly, but you want to know what those mean in terms of conceptually. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.